Is that Jody's or yours? I don't know. Oh, I, I should have wrote it down. Oh, I think Noah's. that one was that's yours. Noah's. Oh, yeah, and that one's yeah. Noah's. And his value change is awesome. Yeah. From the dark to the light. Absolutely. Is it bad should I, be I don't recognize my own painting? <laughs> I know. They all look That's beautiful. Mallory. That's my sister. She did such a good job. That's really pretty. I was so proud of her. There's Misty. Misty, we miss you tonight. It's fine that you're doing your own live painting, I guess. I mean, live <laughs> video. Um, but her sky turned out really cool. This one's Jody's. This was her first um, attempt. She did it before we did the class, which is so amazing. And oh, I think she did an awesome job good. without really any instruction. Oh, and this is her second one. Nice. So that was the before and after. Overachiever. No, I love it. And look at this salt texture on the top with the colors there. It's so good. That's and this cool. was a little um, painting class that our friends did with their kids, cool. which was like so exciting to see. And kids are so fun to watch paint because they just go for it. That one's Drea's, who's in the other room. And her sky was really cool. There's like so much going on that's like active, you know? That's my mom's. She did a purpley sky. She did it along with my daughter. And hers is more purpley, and I love the colors that she got out of that. It's pretty. There we go. <laughs> that was a little recap from the people who did it at home. So send yeah. Them in, last week, uh, send them in. We want to show people and talk about them. And if you want feedback, let me know. I, if you want feedback, you can email it to me and I'll email back some suggestions if you're interested in that. If not, just show it to me and I'll just rave about it because I'm so excited that you're even doing it. It's all good. Yeah. Oh, 7.15. Oh, we need like, oh, we were supposed to have music to start up. We had the greatest showman music playing. Yeah. Chad, give us some jams. The intro music. <clears throat> All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I'm like, oh yeah, my gosh, like, is he's, he's going to do this. Then, he's going to like come and clutch. No. That's okay. Oh, wait, we, oh, we got to go and introduce ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. We'll just make sure. Hey, uh, uh, Drea, Rachel, you have to come in here, too. All right, gather in, folks. They have their heads. Oh, they, oh. Can, they can hear. Are yeah, they coming? They're yeah, they're listening. Yeah. Come in, guys. Come on in. Where do you get such big headphones? Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, which camera am I looking at? The, the big one? Small one? The small one. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Let's Make Art. My name is Sarah Cray, and we are going to start off by introducing everybody, and that way you'll know who I'm talking to when I say people's names and all that stuff. So uh, this is Josh. He's painting with us today, and Molly is painting with us. Rachel is painting, and so is Drea. They're going to be in the in the back room here painting. Uh, Casey's going to be doing camera work, and yes. so is Al. It's me. Right here. <laughs> I can stand right in front of you. They could still see you fine. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And um, Natalie's painting. Jake is going to do some camera work. And uh, Chad's painting with us, too. So say hello to everybody. Hello. Hi. Let's make art. Let's make art. Let's get started. OK. I brought notes with me this time, so I don't forget points I want to make. Look at me being more organized. <laughs> Improving. <laughs> We're working on it. Um, okay, before we get started, we need everybody to raise their right hand. Are you raising your hand in there? Serious business. The, really yeah, they're raising it. I hear it. Okay, and you're going to repeat after me, which is, I promise to have fun tonight. I promise to have fun tonight. I promise to let loose. I promise to let loose. And I promise not to compare myself. And I promise not to compare myself. Thank you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so we're going to start off just with some uh, warm up, some different techniques that we're going to uh, go through the painting, just to put a little bit of practice in before we get started. So oh, let me go through what we're using first. So we have our Dr. PH Martin watercolor paints here. And um, they're my favorite. I love them so much. And we're using four colors, which are uh, olive green, Norway blue, 
and daffodil yellow and cherry red. Now, if you don't have your cherry red, you can absolutely still paint this. And if you've been painting along for, with us the last couple of weeks, you can just mix a little bit of your moss rose with your hyacinth blue and get a color pretty similar to this. So don't let that deter you from um, painting. You can At, show stuff on that page there too. Oh, like here, like here, like this. Paper, yeah. There we go. Some good, <laughs> some good paint picks. And then we're introducing two new elements tonight. Uh, which is uh, gouache here. So we have two different gouache colors that we will be um, getting used to because next week our project is mainly going to be gouache. And um, I just wanted to introduce you to it because it's a really fun medium. It's kind of in between acrylic and watercolor. And um, I just want you guys to get used to it and try new things. That's how we get better. Okay. Oh, and I have some bleed proof white um, here too. Okay. So... You guys pick up your brush. Wait, mom, mom wanted you to do the colors again. Thank colors you. again. What are we using? Daffodil yellow. Lay it flat on that. No, oh wait, should I do it this way? You can lay, yeah, yeah, there you go. Norway blue. Olive green. Cherry red. If you don't have cherry red, you can use moss rose and hyacinth blue. Mix that a little bit. And then the gouache, we have shell pink and olive and we have a little bit of white which we're going to mix with our blue to make like a turquoisey color okay is that good good Go. good okay so we're going to go through a couple um, techniques that we're going to practice here just to get us kind of used to these watercolors so the first one that we're going to do is a value change which value just refers to the lightness and darkness of something and so to do that, I'm just going to grab my brush and get it a little bit wet. And then I'm going to pick up a lot of paint. So make sure your brush has a lot of paint on there. Any particular color? Project. Any color, because we're just uh, practicing and warming up. So whatever color you're excited about using. And um, just lay down a few dashes here. And then while it's still pretty wet, I want to rinse my brush almost completely and then just smear that with clear water kind of going back and forth and down until I get a really, really light wash. So I'm going to do it one more time. Here. I love how the water pulls the color. Yeah, and that color that you lay down is just going to automatically just move across that water. Yes. Yep. So I'm going to do it again one more time. So we want one side of ours to be really dark and the other side to be really light. So if you go back and forth too much across, then you're going to lose that uh, value change because you're just going to, that will be more like an even wash and we're not practicing that. We want a clear dark to light. And so the easiest way to do that is just keep adding water at the end. And that's how you lighten things up with watercolor is you just add more water. And then you can even go back in and drop in a darker color here. Yep, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's looking good. So for yours, it looks like you're going back and forth a little bit too much, which is why it's kind of all one shade. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do, um, which is awesome if we want to do an even wash, which is what we're going to practice in just a minute. So you're just going to lay down that color and then spread it and like don't touch it after that. It's just water, right? Yeah, just water that we're using. And um, the reason why the water lines it up is because it's just making it more transparent. So the paper is actually showing through more, which is why it seems lighter. So just do that a couple of times. And then after you feel comfortable with that, try um, doing that in kind of like a petal shape because we're gonna be doing lots of petals today. So just to get us a little bit of practice, we're just going to, um, it's that same idea where we do kind of a dark area. I'm doing a triangle. And then you're just gonna take your brush and rinse it with clean water and spread it into a petal shape. And I like to use the side of my brush when I'm spreading. So it's like that same idea of getting dark to light. Yeah, that looks really nice. Get it a little too 
too much color down at first because it's really full. You know if it I mean? if your color spreads out too much in your petal and it's too much of an even wash, you can always go back in with your paper towel and lift some color off along the edge. Here. Okay. You guys are all in library painting. Library painting, yeah. It's quiet. We take Gosh. we take art very seriously here. No <laughs> laughing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we just focus. That's okay. Okay. So uh, we'll do another exercise because that petal was just if you felt like you were ready. If you were tired of doing these value changes, you want to try something else. Um, but now we're going to practice doing even washes. Um, so to do that, we're going to essentially do the same thing, except uh, we're going to go back and forth in one area to where it's an even color. So I, I lay down an area and let's say I want like a square. So I make like a square. And then I just go back and forth across this area till it's all even in value, which means one side is not darker or lighter than the other. And after you do that, I want you to make an even lighter one. So we're gonna have like a dark, medium and light, even wash on our page. So I'm doing a dark one now. And again with watercolor, just to make it kind of even, is you just go back and forth with your brush. So here's a dark value, here's a medium value, and here's a light value. So when I talk about value change, I'm talking about um, the change from dark to light. Yeah, good job. Yeah, very nice. Good job. Oh, cool. Yeah, the picture in picture with the, that's perfect. That looks really great. Yeah, I'm like a professional. Um, okay. And then if your washes are still wet, like my dark value is still wet, and just to play with that, just so you guys can see the, the fun of watercolor, I'm just gonna drop in a couple um, drops of water and just see how that spreads. Now, if your, if your little square has dried too much already, then it might not do anything. And if that happens, just make another little area. So these are probably too dry, so I'm just gonna do another one. Just a little area. And then I'm just gonna drop in some water. And that way you can just see that whenever you drop in water like that, the pigment of the color itself is going to move out and along those edges of those water drops. So when we do leaves, um, this is like a really great time to do those kinds of techniques because it's a large kind of surface area that you can play with um, dropping in things. Okay. All right. And um, so before we get started, uh, I'm just gonna talk a couple things of um, problems we might run into with this painting. So this is, oh, I didn't, I didn't introduce our project. This is the painting we're doing here, uh, Dreaming of Spring. And um, so when we do floral paintings like this, we want our flowers to be big because we're trying to fill as much space as we can and we don't want a bunch of white spaces in between our flowers. So just remember when you start laying down our flowers, we want them to be larger and closer together. Because if we start laying them down all over the page and they're not really close together, it's gonna take a lot longer to fill in those um, spaces. And then the other thing is when we get to these flowers, um, we're gonna wanna work quickly because a lot of it is spreading the paint that we just laid down. So when we get there, I'll show you how to do that, but just be aware of that. For those ones, you wanna try and work a little bit faster. Hey, uh, Sue. Liberto said, is wondering if everyone here is a beginner. So Sue's everyone here at the table. So Sue's asking if everyone here is a beginner. Um, I think we have like a mixture 
of different uh, levels here. I know that, um, Josh, you said you haven't nope. really painted. Molly, what's your experience? I dabble. She dabbles, okay, okay. Dabble. <laughs> Natalie has been with us a few classes and I know that yeah. she's taken a watercolor class before, haven't you? Yeah, but not one that taught me how to paint, it taught me how to mix colors. Really? Yeah. Is that like a surprise? Oh, yes. that's cool. <laughs> I was expecting to learn how to paint things yeah. uh -huh. and I learned how to mix colors, so that was very cool. Yeah, <laughs> different. I didn't feel like I learned Oh, okay. Paint, so. <laughs> well, that's what he, we're here for. So, yes, I've just been watercolor painting with you. And Chad, what's your experience? Um, with watercolors, like just what you've taught me. Just what he's done yeah. the last couple of you weeks. Like yeah. Sketching and drawing and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, he's had some experience, so it looks like we have art experience. different well, levels here. Dragon. He's going to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. Okay, let's get started. Let's do this. Okay, so let me make sure this is still in frame. Okay, so we're gonna start. And uh, I forgot to say this even though it's on my notes. Um, it's so much easier to paint something if you have a reference photo to look at while you're painting because then it just kind of helps you. So if you're on our mailing list, I always mail out um, this uh, a printable of this so you can print it out and have it with you while you're painting. Um, so if you're not on our mailing list, get on our mailing list so you can have this and have this ready because it's so much easier to paint something. I use reference photos every single time I paint. So um, there is that. So we have this to look at. So hopefully at home you'll have something. Um, or you can just kind of open another screen and uh, pop it up from when we announced it. So, but that is a way you can get it. It's just a printable on our mailing list. Okay, so we're gonna start with um, this flower right here, this big one. So I usually like to start by putting my big flowers in first. So we're gonna just do a bunch of flowers at first. Um, so I'm gonna take my paintbrush and get it wet. And um, we're using different sizes here. You can use a four, um, there's, this is a six, you can even use a 10. Um, really whatever size, maybe not like a two because uh, we're gonna be making bigger flowers and a two might take a little bit too long, um, but it's still possible. So I'm just gonna grab my cherry red here. And um, for this more purpley color, you can mix a little bit of the Norway blue in it if you want, just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm gonna keep mine this pink color the cherry red color, because I really love this color. So it's gonna be a little bit more pink than the example, but I'm okay with that. And everyone's, everyone's colors are gonna be a little bit different, and that's okay. So we're gonna start with our first petal. And to do that, we're just going to do um, a little triangle with color, mainly color. So mainly paint, I guess, mainly paint on my brush and not a ton of water. And then after I do my little kind of triangle shape, I'm gonna rinse my brush and spread out the color that I put down using just clean water. And I'm gonna make my petal bigger because that's just a little bit too small, so I'm just gonna go over the top here so it's a nice big petal. And then after I do my petal, I'll drop in a little bit of color right at that tip and just kind of let that spread. So when you do your petals, you want to make sure that this, uh, the initial triangle that you laid down stays kind of narrow. And then as we go up, we're kind of, kind of widen it and kind of round it. So it has that nice um, kind of curved petal shape. And then you're just going to repeat that. Just going to do that again. So do a little triangle, rinse your brush, and spread that color out. And this is where round brushes are really nice, right? Because we can just kind of kind of use the side and press down and you get this huge surface area that we're covering, this whole area I'm covering with that paintbrush. So I'm not um, using the tip and doing it this way, right? Which is what we might want to do but you just cover so much surface area when we kind of just lay it on the side and spread it around. There. 
And we're just going to keep doing that in a circle till we get about, I try and get at least five petals on my flowers just because I think um, odd numbers aesthetically are a little bit more pleasing. But if you have room to do more, then you're more than welcome to. If you can only fit four, don't stress, then you'll just have a four petal. Also, if you wanna see how this flower is slowed down, uh, we released a video today of just, it's on our Facebook and on our website, uh, where you can just kind of take a look. It's just how to do one of these flowers really slow down step by step. And that way, you can always refer to that if you just need a little bit extra. Help. And it's okay if your petals touch too. So in this one that I'm about to lay down, my petals are gonna touch this petal, and that's fine too, because that's what happens on real flowers. Our petals are friends. Our petals are friends. <laughs> <laughs> They're friends with each other. Oh, last week I was so sad because I really wanted to say that we were going to paint happy little trees. <laughs> and I forgot. Oh my gosh. When it ended, I was like, no. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. That's okay. Next time we do trees, I will for sure write it on my notes. Bob Ross is smiling. Though. I, will, I will nail it next time. I will be ready. Okay. Misty says she's painting with Ashlyn at home. Oh, nice. good. Misty's painting with Ashlyn. I'm assuming that's her child. Daughter. Her daughter. Fabulous, fabulous. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Okay. And then I'm going to do another flower, uh, same one, but I'm going to go up a little bit. Oh, I guess I don't have to move this up. Um, I'm going to go kind of in this area here. So it's going to go to the side of it, but up a little bit. And remember, try and get your flowers pretty close to each other. And I am going to add a little bit of Norway blue just for, just for a little purple. So do my triangle, and then I just take the side of my brush and spread it. And drop in a little bit of color. And I want those petals to be a little bit closer together. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And all you yeah. did was added the Norway blue? To yep. This? Okay. Just a tiny bit though, because that Norway blue is strong. Super so sometimes strong. I just, um, here I'll show you on here. I'll just, um, take a little swipe of it and move it to an area and then a swipe of my paint and mix that and then see if it's too if it's too blue I'll add more if I want it more purpley I add a little bit more blue And you can see here, like, you might think if your flower kind of looks like this, like, I might only have room for one petal. Even try and squeeze one in. So even if there's kind of like half of one and then another half, that's fine too. I just think it makes a flower look a little bit more full when we can get some, all those petals in there. So don't feel like your petals have to be completely separate from each other. It's okay to overlap them a bit. Okay, those look great. How are you guys doing over here? That looks um, good. You wanna do a quick check-in? Yeah. Let's do check-in. Chad, let's start with Chad. I'm catching up. Yeah, you're doing great. Casey here. So I love how big your flowers are. I love that your petals have kind of this like organic shape to them and they're not totally just um, straight. And this value change on here is really nice. See how beautiful it is from that dark to light. Very nice. Thank you. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Very much. And here is Natalie. Here, I'll let Casey move around here. 
So this is looking really nice too. I like the shape of your petals and that color that you're dropping in here is really nice too. So you can even maybe go a little bit bigger with this one, but I think so far your flowers are a really nice size. Okay. Okay. And then for Molly here, this is looking really nice. So see this like dark to light, sorry, you're painting and I'm totally covering you. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> you're like, um, but this right here to here is really nice. You can maybe even go a little bit bigger with yeah. your petals too. You think so? Yeah. Okay. And same here for Josh here. So this is really nice. Um, I would just want your flowers to be bigger because we want them almost to like touch because in that way we don't have to worry about filling in the space in between when we get to that point. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. They dried pretty well, so it's kind of difficult to make them bigger. Yeah. <laughs> if they dried, you can still make them bigger, but it just might not look as smooth as if they were still a little bit wet. Um, but you can still do it. And we're going to actually cover it with line work anyway, so we don't have to worry too much. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all right. You took a little break. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a peach flower right here. Um, and so you can, this is where we use the gouache. Um, so you can use the gouache right out of the tube because it's this pretty kind of peachy pink. Or what I like to do to make things even a little bit more peachy is I just grab a tiny, tiny bit of the daffodil yellow and mix that in. So I grab a little, I'm going to be using more of the of the shell pink gouache, because I still want to keep it pink, but I like to add a tiny little bit of yellow in there just for a little bit of warmth. So I just do seriously just a little, little tiny dot of the daffodil. Hey, and, uh, so Morgan had a question uh, where she said last night, they were painting last night and they mixed the colors on their butcher tray, but they dried before they finished the project. Okay, so Morgan was saying that her paint colors dried before they finished. You can reactivate your watercolors. You can just add more water. So you can see here on my green, so I poured these out before the class started. My green has dried right here on this area, but I could still absolutely take some water. And um, you, just, you just bring it back here like this. So just by adding water, you can bring that back. Um, however, when gouache dries, you can't bring that back. So, um, but it takes a while for it to dry, so you should be okay. Just for like, if you go to paint tomorrow and you still have colors on your tray, you can reactivate your watercolors, but not the gouache. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the other two flowers, just with this new uh, peachy color. And I'm gonna do it kind of uh, in this area where they meet. And try and get them close enough to where they meet, to where they touch the other colors and gouache is really good to use too because it's more opaque so if I were to scan this in my gouache flowers would probably show up a little bit better than my watercolor because they have that opaqueness to them I'm going to spread these out a little bit more and then because I still want that value even with the gouache I'm still going to go in and drop a little bit of gouache right at that tip. That's really cool. I just look on the paper appears very yeah. different than, than the rest of the colors. Yeah. And sometimes gouache is good for those who like a little bit more control over what they're painting. Gouache doesn't spread as much as the watercolors, so that might make you just feel a little bit better as you're going. Um, it just depends on what kind of painter you are. And if you work fast enough, you can do all your triangles 
kind of at once and then add water. And I dripped. So I'm just going to pick that up. If you wait too long to spread it though, then it's going to be a little bit harder to spread. And then I'm going to do, oh, that's really nice. It's a good color. And Casey, if you want to come in here, and this is where it's fun mixing colors because you see how Chad here has like a lot, a soft pink and then a peach and then like a little touch of yellow right here. That's really gorgeous right there. So this is where mixing color is fun because you, oh, okay. So over here, he mixed some colors and we have like this really pretty peach and then like a little dab of yellow in here, which he probably just got from, from mixing. There's maybe a little extra yellow and it's really gorgeous because we kind of get this natural change between this because we mixed these colors. So there's going to be variation within this flower. Look at that blue, Chad. I love it. It's so pretty. It looks good. I think I got a lot of extra water in here because I'm starting to warp a little. Yeah, so it's also, that's why um, I like to, as you can see here, I have the pad. It's, oh. it's always easier to paint on top of like a, a lot of things. And also it's glued at the top so it won't warp as much. I want to know why you're dabbing with paper towel. Dabbing. Oh, when you, you dropped you a little dab, drip? Sarah? A little drip. Oh, I dropped paint on uh, water. I dropped water on my paper here, if that's what you're talking about. So I just uh, picked it up with my paper towel. And then do you need to use different cups to, to rinse your brush in so the colors don't mix? So this is a trick that I've learned that I have not actually implemented in my own personal life, but I think it'd be very beneficial, is if you have two cups of water, you can use a cup for rinsing your brush, and then you can use another cup just to get clean water. Oh, should I ask? No, <laughs> so sorry it's weird so um so if because sometimes we pick we use the clean water as a color and then sometimes we just need to rinse our brush so if you have two cups there then that way your um, clean water doesn't get dirty because you can rinse your brush in a different cup um, because I'm still doing pink flowers I'm okay with my cup water right now um, but when we kind of start going to our leaves we'll probably switch our pink color out oh oh dear Okay, so I'm gonna do another purpley flower here, and then uh, I'll show you how to do that other type of flower. So remember to try and bring it in close so they're touching. I'm gonna do another one here. And you can mess, me, uh, mess with the color here, like Chad did one that's a little bit more blue, but he got a really cool blue kind of center on his flower, which is gorgeous. I'm just dropping in color right at the, the tip of it. And that looks really nice. You might even want to make it a little bit bigger because, hey yeah, because see how there's still that space in between here? We want to okay. fill that up. Okay. What space do they want to fill up? Yeah, here, come and look at Molly's here. So her flowers are looking really nice. I think her colors are really pretty but we're still getting some white space in between these three flowers where on our painting here that we're looking at, our flowers are all touching. So I know that when you first start out, you wanna be a little bit, um, you're a little bit scared to go big or to get them to rush. Yeah, you're being a little conservative. Don't just let them get big, let them touch, let them bleed together. Um, and then, because you'll see later on, it's when, when we start filling in spaces, it's so much easier. <laughs> oh, Judy meant dabbing the brush on the paper towel. Oh, dabbing. Judy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Judy, she meant dabbing the brush on the paper towel. So sometimes um, when I rinse my brush, it picks up too much water. 
And so I like to just dab it once or twice just to make it so it's not super watery but still uh, can work with the paint. So you can see here that my brush is dripping and that's just too much water. So I'll dab a little bit and then pick up paint. And you'll see, and that's probably why Chad's uh, paper might be warping a little bit because his is pretty water heavy. Yeah. And so just to get that from happening, you just want to dab your your brush against your paper towel before you lay down a lot of color. What would your mother say, Chad? I know, right? <laughs> is she watching tonight? You're fired. <laughs> Has she seen the new mustache? I don't know. <laughs> I definitely would not what agree. What would mom say about that? <laughs> I love it, Chad. <laughs> For you, Casey. <laughs> okay. So, everyone's is looking really nice. We're doing, uh, we're starting some green over there, which is awesome. If you just want to go and do your own colors, do your own colors. I think that's great. I actually love it when I have younger children in my watercolor classes because they just like go for it. And, um, and I don't stop them because it's so fun to see them just make. Okay. Um, you guys ready for that other flower? Should I give you a second? Do we have any other Can questions? Get more of that uh, the cherry. Yeah. That would be awesome. So when you're laying your paints out, um, I, I usually put a lot of the cherry and the green because I'm going to use a lot of those, but the blue I'm just going to use a tiny bit of, so I'll just do like almost a little scratch on the pan so it's not a ton of paint. Thank you. Yeah. Do you need another color? Are you good? Okay. I just... any, any questions from the audience? All over the whole thing still dried up. <laughs> do we have any other questions before we move on to the next flower? You guys doing okay? Taryn says you can't come home, Chad. <laughs> I don't know if she means your mustache. Yeah, I was say, that's what, the that's not what hair? she was saying when I left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So for this flower, it's going to be basically line work and then we smear it with a brush. So I'm still using um, my four, whatever you're using at home, your four, your six or even your 10 you can use for this, if line. that's all you have. Around. Around. Yeah, We're not to liners yet. Sorry. Al, you need to calm down. No, I'm just kidding. And um, I'm getting that color back. So I'm, I'm, I'm mixing another color because my color kind of dried. So I'm just mixing again to get kind of that nice peach. Pull that down just a hair. Yeah. There you go. So I'm mixing and I'm going to add a little bit more of this shell because I'm kind of running out. And then for this, so we're going to do circular lines that are alternating. And we're not going to go fully around our main center because it's kind of, we want the flower to kind of look like it's coming from the side. So I'm going to do my initial curved here, which is kind of like the center of my flower. And then I'm going to take my brush and do circular lines coming up and over, but not fully around it. So it's kind of just from the side. Okay, and I'll do it again over there so you guys can see. And then while fairly quickly, I wanna take my brush and then get it wet and just kind of start smearing those things together. So I'm doing the same motion that I did to lay down the colors. So it still has kind of that curved quality. And I'm just gonna kind of blend those colors together. And blending is just when you kind of like smear things. So I'm just gonna smear that. And then I'm gonna drop in a tiny bit of the daffodil yellow right at the center, there. So I'm gonna do that again for you guys over there so you guys can see. So I'm just gonna use this pink for now. So I do my first kind of dot, like curved here, and then I do curved lines going around it, but not fully around, so here. So you see how they're not going fully around it, just kind of up and over a little. And then I take my water and I just start smearing those together. And I'm kind of like almost flicking my brush. 
so it's getting kind of around it. Might be a good scratch paper. Yeah, if you want to practice on your scratch paper first, go for it. Yep, that looks good. And then you're going to want to add water. So you went all, all the way around, which is totally fine. That's another okay. flower. Okay. So just, but you're still going to want to smear that line work a little bit. Okay. And you'll, yeah, you're going to want to smear yours too. That's good. But you want to try and add water and smear it quickly or else it's just going to look like, like you can even see on mine here. Can you see that well on top from the top camera, the lines on there? Or should I get Casey in here? I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, come here, Casey. So you can even see here on my, that you can even still see some lines, like pretty strong, where if you move quickly enough, you really shouldn't see any. So just keep that in mind. So if you're painting and you're still seeing strong lines, that just means you gotta just paint a little bit faster. Just do it just quicker. <laughs> no. no, it's just that because some people try really hard to take their time to get the lines important, but it's not necessarily about that. I think it's more about moving um, quickly to smear it, and that's how you're going to get that nice flower, not necessarily your lines are amazing. So we're going to do that flower again, and uh, we're going to do it coming off of these two flowers here. So kind of in between. So I take my paint and I'm going to start doing my curved lines. I'm kind of going up and over and around and then I'm moving quickly and I'm just smearing them. Here, and then I'm dropping in a little bit of yellow right at that center here. And sometimes even while it's still wet, if you want to do another couple swoops of color just to add color in there, I'm going to add a little bit of more pink to there. You can just go in. And we can just swoop a bit. That's what we'll call it. We'll just swoop. Swooping. Okay, how is yours? Swoop, swoop, okay. Swoop. Here, Casey, will you bring this closer? Yep. <laughs> Just because I want to, so I think that your, <laughs> I think that your flowers are looking really nice. The important thing is that your center is at a lower level than the top, which is really good. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that I would add for yours is we want the kind of brush marks along the edge, here. Okay. Like here, so it kind of looks like it's petals, going over. Here. So it looks like it's like layers of petals coming up and over the center, but not totally. So yeah, this is looking really good. Just don't smear it too much to where it's all contained. Mm -hmm. Let your brush strokes go up and out of it a little bit. Okay. Thanks, Casey. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> oh, that looks really that nice. Better? Yep, that's okay. looking good. I think yours is looking good too. Josh, the only thing I would add is it okay if I paint on yours? Go for Sorry, it. Sorry, I should have asked you, Natalie. Nope. Um, so I like how your brush strokes are coming up and over. We would just want to add a little bit more to the side, kind of like it's opening up mm. here. So it's opening up all the way around and not like it's a, like a mm -hmm. cup. We want it to look like it's like blooming all the way around here. There we go. So just do that on yours. See how yours is kind of curved here still? Mm -hmm. Let some brush strokes come out on the sides here. Mm -hmm. Yep. How are you doing, Chad? Hard time over there? Yeah, that one's do you want me to do another so one? Natural for me. That's okay. If you don't like this flower, you do not have to paint it. You can keep doing the first ones we were doing, or you can do it a more circular or the flowers that we've learned before. Um, don't feel like you have to do these florals exactly. Well, I yeah. I gotta let go. Oh, that looks beautiful. Awesome. What that are you talking you know, about? Awesome. Like, it's all mushy. No, that's okay. That's okay. That looks like a rose to me. Yeah. And I think the different colors you have in there are super nice. Okay. You're being hard on yourself. I'm not comparing myself to anyone. You're comparing myself? yourself? <laughs> That's true. No, sorry. Oh, well, you're right. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit more paint. Is it up yet? No, not yet. You know, one of these days, we're just going to nail it, and it's going to be so great. So you're, um, you're flicking. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm 
Okay, that is good. I'm gonna give you, um, try it with this brush first. Maybe that's, maybe that's the hard thing. Okay, so I see what's happening here. So for these, you want a really soft pressure to get a thin, sharper line. Oh, okay. So your lines are getting a little bit thick. Too thick out there. So then, I mean, you can still work with this, but when you do the water, you, you're still gonna want that light pressure. Oh, okay. Almost like you're lifting your brush off your paper as you go. Okay. To get those sharper. Sorry, I'm just trying to. No. Yeah. Mix it to make it look. It's kind of like a peony. Yeah. Or like a chrysanthemum, how it has those like millions of, I don't know my flowers very well, I should. Oh, <laughs> this is great. The inner nerd came out. <laughs> okay, are we back on? We're back, what'd they miss, what'd they miss? Okay, I was just going over that flower with a couple of the individuals, um, so you didn't. You didn't miss much. I'm still going to do a couple more. So if you want to see me do it again. Oh, thank you. I'm going to put this here. So I'm going to do another peachy one. And so you start. And um, I told Chad this because he was having a little bit problems. Sorry, a little bit of problems with his. A little, little bit problems. A little bit problems. Little bit. Little um, bit problems. When you do your lines and you do your flicking, you want to be soft pressure so they're a little bit thinner. If you're going a little bit too hard and thick, then we're not going to get that kind of airy, blooming flow that we want. Um, so just try and keep that in mind. Maybe your pressure is a little bit too hard on your brush. So um, I'm going to start with my curved line. And this one I'm doing upside down. So if you need to turn your paper around, feel free to do so. I'm going to keep it this way so it's not... Um, so I don't have to move it back, but I'm just doing alternating circular lines that come up, but not completely around. And then I take my water and using that same flick motion, just spread it around. This kind of looks like hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a hairy flower. Then I drop in a little bit of yellow and then I'm going to go back in. I actually feel like it was a lot easier for me to do the upside down one. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe try it upside down. Maybe that's what you need. <laughs> like that feels yeah. more natural. It's like painting a tree upside down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to do one more, and this time I'm going to use more of a purpley color instead of that peach. And I'm going to do it up around here. Um, and this is the fun thing with watercolor is I'm kind of basing off that first painting I did, but you need to kind of look at yours and see where it needs space filled up. So I might put this here, but maybe it's better if you put yours a little bit lower or maybe you need space up here. Um, it's okay to make it your own and to play with it as you go. So I'm gonna do that curved line. And you can see that my lines kind of change every time. It's not necessarily about the lines. I think it's more about when you add water, how you're spreading that around. Here. And then I want a little bit darker center, so I'm gonna add a little bit of line work after and let that kind of just blend out. And then you're gonna do a little bit of yellow Kind of right at the center. Okay. And while you guys are finishing doing some of those, I'm gonna clean my water. Um, if your water is really thick and pink, which it might be because um, the gouache actually kind of adds a lot to your water, um, you're welcome to go change it. We're gonna start doing some leaves after. Do you want me to change your water? Sure. Okay.
Okay. Yeah, those are looking good. We need to do like yoga during this. Yoga? Just a little. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a yoga? Drea? Drea. Can you read? Can you lead us through a breathing exercise? And if you want a new paper towel too, you're welcome to. I'm gonna grab a new one. I always wad mine up in my hand. Oh my gosh, I do too. As you can see, it it's all wrinkled. <laughs> yeah. I do that same exact thing. It's like, but then you can flip it around. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> You're like, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about it, but I'm going to stop messing with it because I think it's getting worse. Yeah. It started out okay, and now I've just gotten it to a point where I might hate it. Mm. Yeah, the best thing to do when you start to get frustrated is just to stop, leave it alone, and then you Sarah, can come back to it. Sarah Campbell asks, are you just using regular tap water? It doesn't matter if it's hot water or hot water. Okay, so Sarah asks what kind of water I'm using. I am just using from the sink water. And that's what I always use wherever I am. Water of Hamilton, Missouri. Water, this is water of Hamilton. It's not safe for Might drinking, want to start but <laughs> it's <laughs> Some, It's safe to drink. They've done studies. No, they can, you can drink it. It's safe. It's fine. You have, all tap water is safe to drink, except for maybe in Flint. Not in Flint. Flint. Okay. Um... You guys ready to do some leaves? Oh yeah, yeah. leaves are my favorite. <laughs> leaves are, these are so fun. Okay, so we're gonna start with our bigger leaves because when we do these, we always wanna start with bigger things and then work our way down because we're kind of just filling up space. So I'm going to mix my olive green watercolor with my olive paint. So I have, I mean my olive gouache which kind of gives it more of a yellowy color. Oh, yep, yes I can. <laughs> Here, and actually I'll put it this way. So I have my... So at this point in time, it should be relatively dry, right? Yes. <laughs> you wanna have some paper towels down below? Yeah, there? yes, I, I'll get you some paper towel. Just kind of just kind of dab that, Thank pick up that water. Yeah. I need more green. Uh, I would do a little bit darker. Okay. okay, so I have my color. And then I'm going to start putting in um, big leaves. And to do that, I kind of just do the shape of the leaf and let it go to a point. I don't want to taint your green there. And then do the other green. side. Don't the green. <laughs> Here. So if your leaves are looking a little pickly, which has happened, you want just a sharper point on your leaf on the edge and to do that you're just going to use the very tip of your brush with really soft pressure to get that point. Let's just do the picture again. Oh the picture. Here's the picture. This is the leaf we are currently working on. So we're going to do these big leaves first. Here. Okay. And then um, I always like to drop in darker color right at the edge. And this is not gonna spread as well because it, it's a little bit with gouache. So you have to help it a little bit just with a little bit of water. Does it matter if your water is like hard or soft? I don't think it matters if your water is hard or soft. I've never... Um, don't you only paint with Fiji water? I only paint with really fine... Moss, Evian? Evian water. No, I just use it out of the sink. It's the fanciest color. <laughs> Evian. Evian. <laughs> um, but actually, I don't, I know that Utah has hard water, um, and I've never tried painting with watercolors there, so I'm not sure. But I don't think it should be, I don't think it would be a problem. Okay, so I did my leaf there. I'm going to do another one down here. Joey says she's running out of paper and flowers are too big. Oh, I love that problem. <laughs> That's cool, Jody. Just fill it up. 
And then this is also a good time where you can drop in a little bit. I'm mixing a little bit of a daffodil yellow with my green. We, we put a, a uh, oh. Oh. Photo. Look at that reference nice. photo. That cool. Great. Look at us wizards. Back look at here. look so at us. To take down your stream to do it. But. <laughs> We figured that out. Okay, I'm dropping a little bit of yellow in with my leaf just for color variation. Because it's fun. Colors are fun. Okay. And then I'm going to do a few up here too on my left hand side up here. So a couple projects, I think our first floral we did a different kind of leaf that kind of had more like spikier edges. If you like that leaf better, add it. But I, um, sometimes it's it's fun to keep things just simple. So I kept it a little bit more simple for this one. And I'm doing a little drop of yellow in there too. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, and then this is also where if your leaf is still wet, you can drop in water droplets to get different textures on your leaf. Doing this on leaves is probably one of my favorite things because we usually don't, I usually don't add line work to my leaves and then that way you can just let that fun texture show where if we have it on our flowers, sometimes with all the line work we do, we kind of cover it up a little bit. And I'm actually going to add another leaf right here because I kind of have a bigger space in this area that I want. So kind of just look at your painting and see if you might need an extra leaf somewhere. Big leaves are a great way to fill space. Do we need to connect to anything? Not really, I mean, I like to have it kind of close out of the flower, but you don't have to worry about in Which nature. Yeah, not really. Just kind of have it going out. Oh. There. Okay, so I did my big leaves. I added some water to them. So now I'm going to do the, um, the like larger leaf stems. So I'm just going to start going around and filling in um, with a little bit larger leaves. And so to do that, if you haven't done those leaves before, um, is we, I like to do my top leaf first so then I can kind of visualize how far I'm going to go out. So I probably only want to go out this far. So this is where I'm going to do my first leaf here. And then with really, it up. It up. Yes. yeah. And then with really, is that better? Yeah. And then with really light pressure, because that's how we get thinner lines in watercolor, I'm going to do my stem. So it's just really like I'm barely touching the paper. I'm going to do my stem coming up. And then, then you can add your leaves from there um, coming out of the stem. And you can make them fatter, you can make them skinny. I switch it up. I like to do a little bit of both. And this leaf kind of ran into my flower, so I'm just going to kind of paint around my petal here. Yeah, those are looking good. Your leaves look great, both of you guys. Yeah. So Chad's doing some leaves here. Look on this big leaf here. He got some really pretty colors and textures. When that dries, that's going to look really nice. And now he's using, is that a two? Yeah. yeah. He's using his two, which if it's easier for you, because twos, you can get some really nice lines because they're a smaller brush. So if you want to use that for these leaves and stems, you're welcome to. Around that, a round two, sorry. These are rounds that we're using so far. We're not pulling out the liners until the very end. Okay, and Natalie has some great leaves going on here too. Um, the points that she got 
on these sleeves are really nice, how narrow they are at the top. Good job. And Molly's sleeves here are looking really nice. I love how hers are, sorry, I'll wait for you. I love how hers are a little bit more longer and skinny. That's really beautiful. And how this one has a nice curve to it, like a movement. So those are looking really Just good. Down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then over here, Casey, come look at this leaf right here, because this is really cool. Yeah. So we got some really cool texture going on with that leaf right there, which is really nice. And I like how you have a really um, sharp point on your leaves. That looks really good. Okay. So, and then we're just gonna go around and keep adding our stems and our leaves. And we're still, these are kinda a little bit larger. Not as big as the individual leaves we first laid down, but a little bit on the bigger side here. Cause we're still trying to fill up space. So I'm doing my line. And even on these leaves, you can add water droplets in there. You can add drops of other colors to kind of mix it up. Now this stem here got a little bit thick compared to this one, but that's okay. Because when it's all done and all together, you're not really gonna notice one stem on a leaf. Okay, but I will try my two. Okay, and if you need to kind of rotate your paper around um, to do your leaves, feel free to do so. You don't have to keep it up and down this whole time. So I'm gonna do a leaf up here coming this way and I gotta move my tray a little bit. And there's a couple different ways that you can do leaves. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do both. One is a little bit harder than the other. So one way you can do it is you just basically outline your leaf and then you fill it in. And then I like to drop in some color. Or another way you can do it, which um, you might have to practice this or if you're a little bit more familiar with watercolor, this might just be easier for you, but it's all about the pressure of your brush. So we're gonna start off with a soft pressure and then I'm gonna press hard for the wide part and then I soften it up again. So that was just, that leaf was just in one stroke. And the other one, and th that one's nice because you get a more of a natural variation instead of kind of like coloring it in, it kind of makes it an even value. But it just takes a little bit of practice to get like the thin and thick brush strokes. I'm gonna do another one kind of coming out. Just be careful when you're reaching across. I always put my hand in the, in the leaves and then get paint on my hand and then get paint all over my painting. Um, so if you do that, you are in good company. I usually have like a glass of water or milk mm -hmm. or something that I'm drinking and I always dip my <laughs> it, I, I We talked about I that the first time. Jody had that problem Happy last week. Taking a drink. Dripping. I really have done that a few times. Yeah, dipping your, uh, your paintbrush in whatever beverage you in, have by in you. Wine. In your wine. In your wine. I've done it to my milk and I was eating like a really delicious chocolate chip cookie. And I was like so sad that I ruined my milk. <laughs> I, like, I like really considered like still drinking it. And then I'm like, you know what? I probably shouldn't do that. Also it was black, so it turned it like gray. <laughs> so, Yikes. yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have our larger leaves. And now I'm gonna go through, do the same kind of stem leaves, but I'm gonna do more of a medium size. So a little bit smaller. Um, and then after we do the medium sized leaves, I'm gonna show you guys how to get this blue and we'll start doing our kind of soft blue leaves. Now remember, everybody's painting is gonna look different, right? Because 
where even though we're kind of following along on the same one, our mixing is gonna be different. And then also our placement is gonna be different. And that's okay. Don't, if yours is different, don't. especially with these uh, florals. And then another hint when you're, when you're doing these is when I do my stems coming from the top and the bottom, I try not to make it so it's coming straight down or straight up. I try and curve it just a little bit. So I'm going to take my thumb and have it curved kind of a little bit out. Her sound is weird. Yeah, it would. Um, Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, see. I got a little bit. If that happens, if you get a little wrist action going on, just use clean water or as clean of water as you can get and kind of lift that color up. So really we're just doing kind of our filler, filler leaves and filler flowers in right now. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow just for color variation so they're not all the same shade of green. You can also mix your green with a little bit of the Norway blue if you kind of want um, kind of a green blue flowers with uh, leaves which are really pretty. So feel free to do that if you want to. I'm going to do one more stem over here and then we'll mix our blue. Guys are so focused. How you guys doing? How you feeling? Great. Good. Awesome, I think. Yeah. I feel pretty. You feel pretty. Yes. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. I know in the beginning it always looks a little bit rough, um, but as we go and we add more and we bring more out, it just it just starts to come together. Oh, those are really nice leaves, Chad. Thank you. Those are beautiful. You taught me well. Yes. <laughs> I'll just give myself a pat on the back yeah, for that. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Josh, how's the first time painting? It's awesome. Oh, look at his leaves over here, Casey. Look at those. Those look awesome. That's really great. Thank you. You're welcome. He, it kind of has that like a. Uh, kind of natural wavy look that leaves have which is really nice He's so much more than just a sexy beard <laughs> you're so right. much more than just a beard That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay we're gonna mix um to get this light blue that we have um on it and i added i just felt like this needed something else besides pink and green which is why i added blue um so to do that i put a little bit of a bleed proof white on my tray to begin with so I'm just gonna grab some of that and a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of the Norway blue because this, can't see that. oh, I'm sorry. So I'm mixing and grabbing just a tiny bit of the Norway blue. And then I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit of the green. Now this is looking good, but I want it a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna do another kind of swipe of blue. So you get this kind of turquoisey color here. So after I get my color, I'm going to start doing my leaves. Now you can see here because this is the bleed proof white and I used a little bit of the gouache green for this, that this blue that I'm laying down here is not as transparent as the leaves. Um, so 
that's because we're using a more opaque colors here, which I think it's nice to have both of them sometimes. So I'm just gonna be doing my same thing with starting with my top leaf here and then doing my stem. And I'm gonna start putting them in between some of my green leaves for color variation. If it's too green, just add a little bit more blue. But if you like it um, kind of more like a minty green, I don't want to like totally tell you how to live your life. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go around and start filling in with that, that blue. I think we might need a little more blue over here. You need blue? color okay just go around and this is where you can get different um, it's good to get different leaf variation in terms of like these ones I might do a little bit thicker and rounder than the ones I first laid down just because I think it's more interesting visually to have different sizes and colors and shapes I do have a cousin named She's Brittany so Color. Hi, hello cousin. So That's glad you're here. <laughs> That's how we talk to each other, my Utah family. We say, hi cousin. Hi cousin. Hi cousin. Glad you are tuning in. Okay. And I'm just still going around. I keep on moving my palette so I don't knock into it, but. <laughs> Sarah Campbell says her six-year-old is too fascinated to go to bed. <laughs> She's watching. Sarah says her six-year-old's too fascinated to go to bed. You know what's funny is my sister does this with her husband every week and she says that they lay the girls down first, their daughters but they're just like so interested that they always find them like sneaking out of their bedroom and watch to watch, to watch them paint. Enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sneak out for other reasons. It. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. Spoiler alert. It gets yeah. worse. Okay. And I think I'll probably do two more uh, blues over here on the side. Okay. And just a touch over here. I'm kind of running out of, loop, out of room on my left side, if you can see that. Um, but I still feel like I need a little bit of blue. So I'm just gonna do like one tiny one peeking out. Here, kind of going. And then another thing I like to do is, so I have my flowers and I sometimes like to have leaves coming up and be out and in between them because I think it just kind of gives it that extra look of something blooming and overgrown. Um, so. I'm going to just take some of my blue and start doing some blue leaves coming out. And so this, they might um, go on top of your flowers a little bit, that's okay. Just a little bit. And try and fill up some of those white spaces that you have in between your flowers. So a good way to do that, um, if you can't fit a whole flower in between there, is to just start doing some leaves in between. I'm gonna add some more green leaves in between here on this side. I'm gonna 
ask if anybody has anything they're struggling with. Yeah. You guys struggling with anything? Do you need me to go over anything we've done? Or if you have any questions, I can take the time to answer it. I know we're concentrating and starting to fill things in, but let me know if you need me to go over something again. Because hopefully yours is starting to fill out a little bit. That's our goal is to kind of start to have it fill up and look more full. Is there any, any up there that you could give suggestions on? Yeah. Okay, so we'll start here with Chad. Okay, so Chad, you're starting to fill things in nice. The only thing that I would suggest is it looks like there's just certain areas where the greens are coming out of. Don't be afraid to let greens come out in between here too. Oh, okay. So you're gonna yeah. want some coming up here and here because that's gonna give it, because right now it looks really sectiony. Right. Like here's greens, here's greens, here's greens. And just to have it more of that like overflowing blooming look, we want them coming out from all areas. Okay. So you want it coming out here, 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 awesome. and here. Okay? okay? But your leaves are looking really nice. Thank you. Okay, so for Natalie, it's starting to fill up really nice. She's doing a good job starting to fill in the space. Um, I think maybe just having another one come out this way and then start to put some leaves in between your flowers. But that's going to start looking really nice. Okay. So for Molly's here, oh, you did those, those are beautiful. She had a little flowers here on the edge, which is really nice. What I would do is I would probably try and figure out, so you can either do like these <laughs> little flowers in, in between. I'm just scared. <laughs> okay, okay. No, this is such a good point. Sometimes we make something, right? And we love it so much that we don't want to do anything to it, but it doesn't necessarily look completely finished. So sometimes you just like leave it unfinished because you don't want to mess it up, but we have to finish it. Okay, we have to make it look complete. So I understand why you're scared, but you just gotta like push past it and just be like, I got to, I got to make this look complete. But I think if you just added some really beautiful smaller flowers in between here, then that would look really nice and fill up that space. And then just do a little bit more um, smaller green leaves coming out the edges. Okay. I think that's all you need. But it's looking really nice and your colors are beautiful. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're doing a good job. Okay, so for Josh here, these leaves are looking awesome. I think his leaves work is beautiful. I would just suggest having leaves come out this way a little bit and then over here. Because they're coming up out on the top really nice and we want them to come out along the sides and the bottom mm -hmm. too. So okay. good job. Okay. How's everyone doing at home? Good? Say good, yeah. Good. Beautiful. Lovely. Beautiful, beautiful. I can't wait to see them. Florals are so fun because like everybody, they all look so different. Even up here. No bouquet is no, no bouquet is the same. Just like you. <laughs> We're all different. You're a flower. You're a flower. Okay. And then I like to do really, really tiny, uh, like kind of almost twigs in my work too, because I like having the large, medium, and small. So to do that, I'm just gonna take my olive green. And the beautiful thing about this olive green gouache is it has like, I'm gonna move this over so you can see. It, it's really yellow, almost like a gold, kind of like a greeny gold, which is beautiful. So I'm gonna use only this color because I want just that kind of yellow. And I'm gonna just do tiny little, um, like super tiny leaves. So I'm using my two brush. You can use this with the larger one because all the Princeton rounds have a really fine point. So I'm using a round and then I'm gonna do a super thin stem and just tiny little leaves off of that. And then this brings in another color element too, which is kind of a darker yellow. And so that I'm just gonna do the same thing where I kind of go around here and just start putting it in where I need a little bit of a color and size variation. And I'm gonna 
try really hard not to smear my painting. And this is also a good time where you can start doing little buds along the side. I like to do buds around the outside of my florals just to introduce some colors along the edge. And that way it's not just like greens and blues. So to do that, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my peach and you're, it might have dried a little bit. You can still see if you can mix it up a little bit. So I usually just try and get a soft wash and do kind of more circles. I like to do sets of three, but you can do a bunch of, um, you can do like a set of eight or two, and then I just add drop a little bit of color right at the top. Here. So you can see, you might see this on your own palette but my gouache dried and I'm trying to reactivate it with water, which sometimes works, but you also might get like specks, like kind of dried paint specks in there. Um, sometimes I just don't let that bother me, but if it's really bad, then um, just try and use a watercolor, like maybe this color over here, because watercolor just comes right back. Give up on your gouache. <laughs> Gouache is great for layering, and we're gonna do a layering project where, where you'll see that. It's really fun. You gotta, you gotta fill, you gotta do it, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're putting it off, but you gotta do it. Because I've absolutely done that where I'm like, I'm so afraid to add something because I'm going to ruin it. But then it just like sits unfinished in my pile. And it's like, what are you going to do with that half finished painting? Nothing. So you got to, <laughs> you have to finish it. I feel like there's a deeper story here. <laughs> uh, okay. And then I'll do some stems that lead my buds to the center. So they're not just floating flowers. And you can do little leaves off there too. Okay. Let's scoot that up about two inches. Two inches. Is that good? That's good. Perfect. Yeah, good. See that measure, visual measurement scale I just did? <laughs> just kidding. Okay, how's everybody's looking? That's looking really nice. That's looking good. I gotta you're work on some buds. You're filling it in. Good job. Yes, you started. You started your. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Yep, that's looking really nice. Look at these leaves right here. Those are gorgeous. Love it. Love it. Nally's putting a little orange buds in, which are nice with oh, this. Yeah. With her kind of orangey purple flower she has over here. She's introducing this color back in here, which is a good idea. Good job, Natalie. Molly connected. <laughs> Molly. Yep, you're filling that in. Good. Yeah, I would just fill this whole space in with those really pretty. You think? So? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, I'm just just fill just it just like as it. much as you can. Because we want to get rid of those white spaces. Good job. And Josh is starting to do some leaves coming out over there. Very nice. Dang. 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 Okay. <laughs> Dang, dude. Back at it again. Back at it again. Okay, does anybody have any questions? I, for my painting, um, I'm probably about the point where I can do some line work. Um, line work I usually try and leave last because I want to make sure that my florals are dry. So I'll usually put everything in and then hopefully by then my main flowers are dry because I started with those. And then I'll go back and start doing line work. Do you have any questions before we start that? Is it dry enough? Mine is dry enough. What uh, if it's not dry enough? If it is not dry enough, do not do line work yet. Because <laughs> what's going to happen is, I'm going to show you on the scratch paper. So um, let's pretend 
that this area here is a beautiful petal that I'm about to do line work on. Can they see that on the? Yeah. Okay. Um, I need a little bit more paint, sorry. So since it's dry, I'm gonna be doing lines and they're gonna show up and they're gonna be sharp because it's totally dry that I'm working on. So you see how those lines are staying in place? Whereas if your petal is still wet, if you try and do lines, it's just gonna bleed out and be thick. So you see the thickness differences between those. So yeah. if you do, if you do your line, do you just say ew? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. he went ew. Yeah. Ew. So, um, and sometimes I think my petal is dry and I do one line and it starts to bleed. Um, that's when I, and actually it happened. Casey, can you come in close on this? Yeah. You were about to sit down. No, that's good. Um, no sitting for you. So right here, you can see that this started to bleed. So when I was doing the line work on this flower, this petal was still wet. So you see, I did the first two lines and then I'm like, oh, that's bleeding. I moved on. I moved on to a drier area. And then when this was dry, I went back and finished the line work. So if you do one line and it starts to bleed, don't stress. Just be like, okay, it is not ready yet. And move on to a different area or just add leaves around the edges till, till it's dry. Okay. I say we do some line work. Who's with me? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. I like how the people not painting say yes. <laughs> yeah. Josh, Christine says yours look very tropical. Ooh, Sweet. tropical. Tropical florals going on. Some hibiscus in there. Yeah. Okay, first of all, wait, let's bring Why Molly's over. This looks so great that you're filling the space in and those flowers look beautiful. No, I would even want to try putting some here and maybe even continuing this coming out here. I'm loving it. Good, good. good. You found a compromise. Yes. <laughs> okay. Something I can work with. So I have some line brushes here that you guys can use. Um, there. Oh, wait, do you have a liner? You do, awesome. Okay, you're gonna use this one. Okay, so you can use a liner, a uh, two or a four, whatever size you have. Um, it really just affects the length of your brush, but with this line work, it doesn't, you can do a two or a four on it. And then I'm gonna start doing the line work on my purple flowers. And if you wanna practice the lines first before you lay it out, down on your flowers, I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I like to use the same color. I try not to do two different colors in terms of uh, floral. So like on this pink flower here, I'm not gonna add blue lines on it because I don't think that that is gonna look really nice. I try and stick with this really dark color that I use for the center, which is really just the pure cherry red. And then to do my lines, I'm gonna use really soft pressure. So just practice doing thin lines and practice some with the curve, right? Because we don't want our petals to do this. If we do completely straight lines across our petals like that, then it's gonna flatten our petal. Where if we follow the shape of the petal, then it, it's gonna like make it look a little bit more round and give it that roundness that we want. Katie Conroy says, Somehow I'm painting an underwater seaweed hibiscus composition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to see that underwater seaweed hibiscus painting. Okay. I feel like I'm ready to do line work, but you guys are like just loving what you're doing. Leaves. <laughs> well, I'm going to start just in case those out there are ready. And if you're not, that's totally fine. We're going to be doing line work for a little bit. So just stop in whenever you're ready. Okay, so I'm gonna take my cherry red, which is what I use for this flower, and I just start on one side of the petal, and I do soft pressure. I just follow the line of the edge of my petal here. So if you did the thin on the bottom and thick on the top, then it should curve. So I just follow this shape. Now, as we get to the center, it's gonna be a little bit more of a straight line. 
because then it kind of shifts direction in terms of curve. And I just follow that across. And if your line goes outside of your petal, that's okay. Sorry, I'm a little shaky. <laughs> that's okay. So I just start on the edge here and I just follow the shape. Now, if you really like the textures that you got on your petals and you don't really want to cover that up and, um, or you're afraid to lose some of that, um, cause as you can see, our line work kind of covers up a little bit of the texture. So if you really like your texture, then don't worry about doing this line work. Or maybe you're just don't feel comfortable. You don't think you're at that level yet where you can do like nice even lines. You can just do a couple kind of coming out like this in the center. So we're just gonna follow that. And even if your petals bleed into one another, you're just gonna kind of make the shape. It's okay if they get crooked, like wiggly. Yeah, if they get a little wiggly, that's okay too. Cause there's gonna be so many lines that they're not going to be like, that one line is a little shaky. Do you always go from the middle out or from the out in? I go back and forth depending on where it is. So, um, so on the bottom ones, it's easier for me to go from the middle out. But then on the top ones, when I'm dragging it down to the center, it's easier for me to start at the top and go to the bottom. So I switch it up. Whoa. <laughs> what? Said whoa. Whoa. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, you are. <laughs> okay, and then you just repeat that on your flowers. Um, so I'm going to stick with this color for these two. I might add a little bit of blue on this one. But then when I get to my peach one, I'm going to use more of a peachy color on that. So I try and stay within the same um, colors that I did the first, that I did the petals with. And remember, if you wanna see this flower really slow down, we have that up on our Facebook and our website. So if you just, if you're watching this later on and you wanna see that close up, you're welcome to take a look. Oh well, yeah, we have tips and tricks. Oh yeah, we have tips and techniques. It's a new thing. You're gonna love it. So my petals on this flower bled into each other a lot. You know, here, I'll show Casey. So like on this one, there's like a clear, here's one petal, here's one petal, here's one petal. This one, they kind of bled, bled in with each other a lot, but when we're doing line work, this is where we can take the opportunity to kind of shape out those petals. So I'm gonna keep this one, and then I'm gonna end it about here. And then I'm gonna start the next one here. So then this petal is gonna look like it's coming underneath, which is cool, because then it has kind of another layer. Then I'm going to end that kind of there. Then I'm going to do this one that's kind of underneath. I was really scared to do this. I'm surprised how... You're doing I an excellent job. It. Yeah. Casey, come look at these lines like here. A lot more natural to me than I thought it would be. Oh, good. <laughs> that's a happy surprise, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And a lot of it is just because the line brush is so thin, it's, it's easier to get those kind of really nice thin lines. Mm -hmm. That seems super easy. But I love this. I would not have guessed. Yeah, I know. It, I think it intimidates a little bit of people, but you just kind of get in this groove. We just do line after line, follow the shape of the petals. But I like it because it just adds another technical element to it that I think adds interest to your florals. OK. 
Okay. Wow, that color on that flower is really beautiful. I love that blue to pink. It kind of came out, didn't it? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It was funny because I felt like our first class there was so much talking and then the couple after I was like I'm like it's so it's so quiet and I've just come to embrace it you know what I'm not gonna fight it we're focusing we're a live band just off to the side yeah there we go but yeah after the first one I was just like nobody was talking that's okay that just means we're into it, right? Yeah. Amen to that. Also, it's kind of hard to talk and paint at the same time when you're concentrating. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit more of a peach color because mine dried. But I need that darker color for my center. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my gouache. And I'm going to steal there some of their daffodil yellow because mine got some green in it. I'm just going to mix that and add a tiny bit of pink. Here. And I'm just adding a little bit more pink to this because I want to make sure that you can see those lines. So I'm not going totally pink, but a little bit darker. I take my liner brush. Get that color. Just do the same thing. So even though that looks like a really light color, it's showing up really nice against my really soft peachy petals. Peachy petals. Peachy petals. <laughs> I think I need a little more of that. I think ours is all dried and destroyed over here. Oh, you need more yeah. gouache. Your stuff dried up. Pretty good. Okay. And after I do these lines, I'm actually going to go back in and do a little bit more leaves in between my flowers to fill it up just a little bit more. Do you do anything on the circle flowers on the round? These ones? No, I don't. I like to leave it like that. I don't do any line work on those. But if you wanted to try some line work, I would love to see how that would uh, look. If anybody wanted to try it, send that to me. And while you're doing your, a line work, you can go in and add... Um, some veins into your leaves if you want. I like to usually just do like one one vein, like a main one on the big ones. Um, but there are lots of watercolor artists who do kind of veins on every leaf, even these kind of smaller ones, and it looks really nice. So just kind of as you paint more, you'll figure out your own style and what you like to go for. And when I do my, my leaves, I want to make sure it's a darker color on the vein. Same, same kind of idea. We want that line to be seen. Just going to do a line coming out. Here.
And I'm just starting to fill in some white space that's still in between my flowers. Oh, yes. Get some going on there. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll give you some more peach or the shell pink. So I'm going to do the center of my flowers really quick after I add in just one more green leaf here. Okay. So uh, for the center of my flowers, I usually always stick to two different colors, which is like a yellow orange or like a black. And depending on the color of my floral informs what color I use for the center. So my purples here that I have, um, because they're a very strong, kind of naturally darker color, if I did a yellow on top of that, you probably wouldn't see that very well. Um, it would get lost because this color is so dark and yellow is just naturally light in color. Um, so I'm gonna do more of a black uh, center on those or a brown. And then for my peachy one right here, I can do a yellow center on that because that's a really light color and that yellow is gonna show up. Now, for a little bit of color theory here, we don't have black. If you have black at home, you're welcome to use it, but I did not include it because I wanted to show you that there's other ways to mix colors. You don't have to always use black. So um, if you mix complementary colors, um, they make a darker color, either like a really dark brown or a black. And um, complementary colors are um, the primary colors mixed with the complement. So we're gonna do green. So I'm gonna take my green, is that in the frame? And then even though I don't have red, I do have cherry red, which is pretty close. And I'm gonna start mixing those together and that's gonna make kind of a brown, a dark brown that we have. So this is just a tool that you can use if you don't have another color at home, you can, you can try and mix different colors here. But I basically just want it to be dark, something close to brown or black. And then after I get my dark color mixed, I'm gonna try adding a little bit of blue in here to see if that will make it a little bit darker. There we go. Good job, Jade. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So if you mix your cherry red and your green and it's still not dark enough, you can drop a little bit of Norway blue in there and that's gonna give it a more of a black brown. Okay, so then I do my center, I just do like a circle around here. And sometimes I leave a little white dot in the middle or you can fill it in completely. I'll do both, so I'm gonna fill this one in completely here. But then on this one, because I have a nice white center here, I'm going to leave the center of it mm -hmm. white here. We're not using the line brush anymore, right? No, I'm sorry. I switched back to um, a two or a four. It's easier if you have a little bit bigger brush for this because we're filling it up. And then after I do that, I'm gonna do a series of dots. And you almost want to imagine um, so if this is my center here, I'm gonna do dots like this, but, but with dots. So it kind of looks like a target. I just wanna make sure that there's this white space in between my center and when I do my dots. So I have my main dot and then I'm gonna do, it's kind of just like polka dots. So I'm just gonna go all the way around 
and there's no rhyme or reason and they don't have to be perfect dots kind of the more the better we want like a nice bundle going around the center of my flower here just go all the way around here and then I'm going to finish this last flower before I do my yellow center on my peach And the reason why we want to leave space in between these is because we're going to do little stems. So just using the color that's already there, because this is still pretty wet, I'm just taking my liner brush and just kind of connecting the little dots to my center. And you don't have to do, you don't have to make sure there's a stem on every single dot. Just kind of give people the idea. I wish I knew the anatomy of flowers so I could tell you what those are called. I don't, but you guys know how little uh, the center kind of pops out. So I'm just gonna do that kind of going all the way around. Okay. And now I'm gonna do my center on my peachy flower. And for that, I'm gonna mix my daffodil yellow with the olive gouache because it's going to give it kind of a darker yellow. You can try using just daffodil yellow by itself, but it might just be a little bit too light. And I'm going to use my two brush to do the center. Do my circle here. And then I'm going to do dots around it. Another thing you can do with the center is if you, instead of leaving the very center of your uh, center, very center of the center of your flower all white, you can fill it in with a darker color because some flowers have that too. So I'll do that on this one so you guys can see what that looks like. I'm going to mix it a little bit with my brown to get a darker yellow. And then I'm just going to put that right in the middle. There. And then I take my liner and I connect it. That's okay. <laughs> if you forgot to put your lines on the flower first, that's totally fine. Um, you might want to wait till the black is, or the dark center is dry before you do the lines, or you can just not do lines on those. Um, Chad, I know, right? you screwed up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're right. I'm breaking my own rule. No, that's that. Don't worry about that. Cause um, like even I put my my leaves have come over my flower, and I just did my my lines on top of it even a little bit. So um, when it's all done and you have all these things going on, people aren't going to notice those little details that we're noticing. Okay. Oh, How's that's very looking? nice. How's, every, how's everyone looking? How's everyone feeling? Feeling it's good, fun. feeling good. You gotta feel good. Those are looking great. Here. Here, Ch uh, Chad, let's check in with, uh, no, sorry, not Chad, um, Casey. Sorry, Chad, you can look too, oh, but. <laughs> Casey, why don't we, yeah, we did that on purpose. No. Um, so Molly filled in her white spaces and that looks awesome. Yeah. And it looks so much better than just leaving it blank. So I'm proud of you. <laughs> it was scary, but you did it and it looks so much better. Good. Yeah, because that looks great. And filling stuff in, it always looks better than having these big white spaces between flowers because now it looks like a bouquet where before we weren't really sure if all those flowers were together. Now we know. They're official. They are officially one thing. They're Facebook official. <laughs> they're Facebook, Facebook official. They are. Yes. That's how together they are. Good job. 
Should we hold ours up? Are we, should, should we, should we be done? Do you guys have any questions? Cause I think mine. Looks awesome. Mine's done. Well, of course. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Thanks. Well, while they, while they finish, maybe talk about next week or stuff we have coming up. Okay. Okay. Yes. While you guys are finishing up, I will do next week's. Let me get it. Okay. So next week is close to Valentine's day. It's like the day before, right? That we're painting. I'm pretty sure. The third, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So we're doing a heart. Oh. A heart with flowers. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, cool. And this is all gouache. Um, so we have the supplies list up there. Now, um, some of you might be men who are looking at this and are like, what am I going to paint with that? Let me tell you. If you gift this to the woman in your life, they would die. So if it's your wife, if it's your mom, maybe it's, you know, the pizza delivery woman that you see every Friday night. That sweet pizza delivery, that sweet delivery pizza woman. Delivery woman. <laughs> every Tuesday night. Paint this, give it to her, say happy Valentine's Day. She would love it. My husband painted something for me one time and I, I've kept it forever. So um, you can guys can paint this together. And um, we're gonna just be working with gouache by itself so you guys can see how fun it is and how fun it is to do layers on top of things. Um, so that's ours for next week. I'm excited to do it, celebrate some love. And I think we should hold ours up, even if we're not done. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's... Dre and Rachel, you have to come do it too. <laughs> oh, are they wearing headphones? Yeah. That's okay. We're not all finished in here. Not even close. <laughs> Don't stress. We all paint Josh, at different looks speeds. Great, it looks great, especially for you Those not being are? a painter. Yeah. 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 Bada boom, bada bing. Come on, yeah, come on in. <laughs> Get in there. I just want to walk in. Yeah. Okay. So here, everybody hold yours up if it's not super wet. Love it. Oh my gosh, look at those colors, Rachel. Those awesome. Thank you. Gorgeous. Good job, you guys. Oh. We're going to do a close up, go around. We all have different colors and compositions. It's fabulous. So, no matter what yours looks like, post it, share it with us. Uh, if you're, you can share, you can uh, send it to, to us paint on. A vase and we can all just there we go. Stick it to, just stick it all to coming it out of the vase. What are they hashtagging? So this project was called Dreaming of Spring. So if you put it on Instagram, you can do hashtag Dreaming of Spring. Tag us in it. Uh, I like to share it with people. I put it in our stories, um, and I like to compliment it. So please share. I know it's scary. Um, it's very vulnerable to put your art out there, but we all want to see it. And when other people do it, it gives us the confidence to do it ourselves, which is the goal um, to create a community of artists that are learning and bettering themselves. So good job, you guys. Thanks for sticking with this Ooh. one. And uh, we will see you next week. Woo! Woo! Yeah.